Hello everyone, welcome back again to my channel Yam Hem Educamix TV 25 Please don't forget to subscribe Thank you so much So now, pag-uusapan naman natin Yung mga Filipino revolts against the Spaniards At alamin din natin kung ano yung mga rason Kung bakit nag-alsa ang mga Pilipino Laban sa mga Spanyol Struggle for rights and freedom The Filipinos love freedom They do not like cruel foreigners telling them what to do or oppressing them. The Spaniards did not really take good care of the Filipinos under Spanish rule. So, the Filipinos often rebelled against the Spanish government. During the three centuries of Spanish rule in the Philippines, there were more than 100 revolts by the Filipinos. They helped to bring a little improvement in the people's lives. But the Filipinos were not happy until they were free. So now let's talk about the Filipino revolts against the Spaniards and its causes. So first is the revolt of Lacandula and Sulaiman in 1574. The cause of this revolt is La Bisaris reversal of Legaspi's policy. After the death of Legazpi on August 20, 1572, Governor Guido de la Besares no longer exempted the native rulers and their descendants from paying tribute. He ordered the confiscation of their patrimonial land properties. Because of the new policy, Lacandula and Suleiman decided to rise in arms. Taking advantage of Limong's attack in Manila in 1574, the two chieftains proclaimed the revolt and gathered their warriors in Nabotas. Juan de Salcedo and Father Jeronimo Marin were sent by Labisares to persuade them not to carry out their plan. They were given an assurance that all their grievances would be remedied and those who took arms would be pardoned. Governor Labisares did this gesture to ask help from Filipino natives in driving away Limahong from the country. Next is the First Pampanga Revolt in 1585. The cause of this revolt was abuses of the encomenderos. Disgruntled by the way the encomenderos administered, some brave Pampangueño leaders connived with the people of Manila and the Borneans to rise in revolt. According to their plan, they would secretly enter the city of Manila one dark night and massacre the Spaniards. A native woman who was married to a Spanish soldier happened to learn of it and warn the Spanish authorities about it. The leaders were arrested and executed without any fair trial. Next is the Tondo Conspiracy in 1587-1588. The cause of this uh, revolt is the regain lost freedom. Attempting to restore freedom and local leadership being enjoyed during the pre-colonial years, Agustin de Legazpi, the nephew of Lacandula, together with other leaders like Martin Pangan, the governor Silio of Tondo, Magat Salamat, the son of Lacandula, Juan Banal, another Tondo chief, Esteban Taes, chief of Bulacan, Pedro Balinget, Chief of Pandacan, Pitunggatan, Chief of Tondo, Pilipi Salonga, Chief of Polo, and Jeronimo Basi, brother of Agustin de Legazpi, planned to overthrow the Spanish rulers in the country. Through a Japanese Christian, Junesio Fernandez, Agustin de Legazpi and his fellow conspirator contacted a Japanese sea captain, Juan Gayo, to get arms in Japanese warriors to fight the Spaniards. In exchange, he and his Japanese warriors would be given one half of the tribute collected in the Philippines. Aside from this, help would also be secured from Borneo, Laguna, and Batangas. The conspirators with their warriors would then assault the city of Manila and start killing the Spaniards. Magat Salamat innocently revealed the plan to Antonio Surabao, a Koyo native who was pretending to be a supporter. Surabao later recounted this to his master, Pedro Sarmiento, the Spanish encomendero of Calamnianes. Immediately, Captain Sarmiento rushed to Manila and informed Governor General Santiago de Vera on October 26, 1588, the existence of a conspiracy against the Spanish government. Eventually, the governor ordered the arrest of all persons impl 
dedicated the revolutionary plot, including Junisha Fernandez, a Japanese interpreter. All these suspects were investigated and tried in court. They were given harsh penalties. Agustin de Ligaspi and Martin Pangan were brutally hung. Their heads were cut off and placed in iron cages. The government seized their properties. The sides of their homes were plowed and sown with salt to remain barren. Judicio Fernandez was hung and his property confiscated. Also executed were Magat Salamat, Jeronimo Base, and Esteban Taes. The rest were given lighter punishments, heavy fines, and some years of exile from their town. Five of the leading members of the conspiracy were exiled to Mexico. There are Pedro Balinguet, Petongatan, Felipe Salonga, Calao, and Agustin Manuget. Next is Magalat's Revolt in Cagayan in 1596. The cause of this revolt is the tribute. During the rule of Governor Francisco Tello, two brothers instigated the people of Cagayan to rise in arms against the colonial government because of the latter's arbitrary levy collection. One of the brothers was called Magalat. The uprising was suppressed by the authorities. Magalat and his men were kept in Manila as exiles. The Dominican missionaries of Cagayan persuaded Governor Tello to pardon them after knowing the flight of the two brothers. And the favor was granted. After Magalat was released, he went back to Cagayan and incited the people to continue the fight. Many Spaniards and loyal natives were killed by the rebels. Governor Tello sent Captain Pedro de Chavez to quell the revolt. Magalat, however, remained undefeated in open battle. Later, the Spaniards decided to hire native assassins. Magalat was murdered in his own house. Next is the revolt of the Igorots in 1601. The cause of this revolt is the refusal to accept new religion. The Spaniards were determined to convert the Igorots to Christianity. They launched a crusade to proselytize the highland natives of Luzon and to place them under Spanish authorities. A strong expedition was sent to the Igorot land to stop the native from resisting colonial subjugation. However, the Spaniards were only able to gain nominal political and military control over them. Next, the revolt of the Irayas in Northern Isabela in the Cagayan Valley in 1621. The cause of this revolt is the oppression of Spanish officials. Pray Pedro de Santo Tomas, a Dominican missionary, tried to convince the rebels to avoid an uprising against the abusive Spanish officials. The rebels led by Gabriel Dayag and Felix Cutabay refused to heed the priest's words of peace. However, they treated Father Santo Tomas and his missionary companions with respect. They allowed the priors to live unmolested with all the ornaments and jewels of the churches. After the missionaries had left, the Irayas began their fight by killing the oppressive encomenderos and burning their houses. After this bloody incident, the rebels went up to the Basile River and built their fortification on a rocky hill. Father Santo Tomas returned and exhorted the leaders to lay down their arms and promised them that the government would pardon them and remedy their grievances. The revolt ended without a fight. Next is the revolt of Tamlot in Bohol in 1621 to 1622. The cause of this revolt is to return to native religion. In 1621, Tamlot, a babaylan or native priest, reported the appearance of a diwata who promised the people a life of abundance without the burden of paying tribute to the government or dues to the church. He persuaded the natives to abandon the Catholic religion and rise against the Spaniards. Around 2,000 Boholanos responded to Tamlot's call. They began the uprising at the time when most of the Jesuit fathers, the spiritual administrators of the island, were in Cebu celebrating the feast of beatification of St. Francis Xavier. They burned the villages being supervised by the Jesuits, as well as their churches. They threw away all the rosaries and crosses they could find. News of the revolt reached Cebu. 
Don Juan de Alcarazo, the alcalde mayor, sent immediately an expedition to Bohol consisting of 50 Spaniards and more than 1,000 natives from Cebu and Pampanga. In the midst of a heavy downpour, Tamlot and his followers were crushed. Next is Bangkaus Revolt in Leyte in 1622. The cause of this revolt is return to native religion. Pareho sila ng ipinaglalaban di tamblot ng Bohol. The leader of this rebellion was the age chieftain of Limasawa. He is Bangkau, who was one of the first local leaders who received Miguel Lopez de Legazpi in 1565. He had been previously converted to Christianity and became loyal to Spain. But in his old age, Bangkau together with his sons and a native priest named Pagali lead the people of Karigara Leyte to rise in arms in defense of their old religion. Soon, they had the whole island into armed resistance. Father Melchor de Vera, a Jesuit, went to Cebu and warned the Spanish authorities of the uprising. Alcalde Mayor Alcarazo sent a fleet of 40 vessels manned by hundreds of Cebuanos and some Spaniards to Leyte. The rebels were offered peace but they turned it down. The Spanish Filipino forces pursued them in the hills and defeated them. Bangkau, together with his son in Pagali, fares in the battle. Soon, his second son was beheaded as a traitor. His daughter was taken as a captive. Bangkau's head was placed on a stake as a public warning to generate fear among the natives. Next is the Revolt of Ladja in 1643. The cause of this revolt is the Spanish oppression. Pedro Ladja, a native of Borneo, who claimed to be a descendant of Braha Matanda, instigated the people of Malolos, Mulacan to rise in arms against the Spanish government. He was able to recruit a number of followers but before he could carry out his plan, Father Cristobal Enriquez had already entreated the people to remain loyal to Spain. Ladja was later on arrested and sent to Manila to be executed. Next is the revolt of Dabao in 1650s. The cause of this revolt was the controversial decree to send carpenters to the Cavite shipyard. To move freely among fellow Christians, Dabao, a Manubo chieftain in northern Mindanao, allowed himself to be baptized to the Catholic faith. He convinced some new converts to join him in his plan to kill the religious and all the Spanish soldiers in the fort. Dabao's opportunity to carry out his plot came as natives who stole a quantity of maize and rice were being hunted down. He offered himself to catch them. He took his men to act as prisoners. Just when the men were going to be set in the stocks for their punishment, Dabo attacked the captain and the supposed prisoners joined him by taking out their concealed weapons. All Spaniards in the garrisons were killed. Governor Diego Fajardo offered amnesty to the rebels to end the northern Mindanao unrest. However, the rebels who surrendered were either hanged or enslaved or taken to Manila, where they were sold to Spanish household. Next is the Sumoroy's Revolt in Samar in 1649-1650. to The cause of this revolt is the forced labor. Under Juan Sumoroy's leadership, the people of Palapag Samar rose in arms against the government. They resented Governor Diego Pajardo's order, which involved the sending of men to Cavite shipyards. Hostilities began on June 1, 1649 with the killing of the curate of the town. The revolt spread to Albay and Camarines, Cebu, Masbate, Camigin as far as northern Mindanao. Sumoroy won several victories over the Spanish-Filipino forces. At one time, the Spanish commander offered a large sum of money in exchange of Sumoroy's head. The rebels sent him the head of a pig instead. In July 1650, under cover of darkness and rainfall, the government forces staged an assault on the natives' fort. The rebels were caught by surprise. Sumori's mother perished in the battle. The revolt ended with individual surrenders. The rebels themselves killed Sumoroy and brought his head to the Spanish commander. 
Next is the Maniagos Revolt in Pampanga in 1660. The causes of this revolt are frequent recruitment of men to cut timber in the mountains and bandala. Pampanga's rice production suffered exceedingly from the disruptive effects of polo or forced labor. 1,000 Pampangueños had been working for 8 months as timber cutters. To show their sentiments against the government, the workers revolted and set their campsite on fire. They chose Don Francisco Maniago, a chief from the village of Mexico, to be their leader. The armed rebels gathered in Luau under Maniago and another group made preparations in Bacolor. They closed the mouths of rivers with stakes. Letters to other chiefs in Pangasinan, Ilocos, and Cagayan were sent asking them to join the uprising against the Spaniards and later elect a king of their own. By the time the province of Pampanga revolted, the government owed the local inhabitants more than 200,000 pesos due to unpaid rice purchases from the Bandala system. The Spaniards tried to end the rebellion immediately because they knew that the Pampanganos have been trained in military art. Governor Manrique de Lara began his maneuver with a show of force by bringing with him 300 men in Makabebe. Seeing the well-armed Spaniards, the Pampanganos showed cordiality. This caused other rebels to waver and distrust one another. Governor Lara called for Juan Macapagal, the chief of Araya, to a discussion. Dilara treated him well and assured him rewards if he would side with the government. Makabakal consequently accepted the offer. He went back to a riot and organized a force to repress the rebels. His defection discouraged other chiefs. Parish priests as well as mercenary soldiers were also employed to demoralize the rebels. The governor general, moreover, proposed a partial payment of 14,000 pesos on the total amount of 200,000 pesos that the government owed to the Pampangueños. The Spaniards concluded an agreement with Maniago which brought about peace in Pampanga. For fear that the Pangasinenses would strike back, the Pampangueños themselves demanded two Spanish garrisons in the province, one in Lubao and another in Arayat. From then on, they never revolted against the colonial government. Next is the Andres Malong's revolt in Pangasinan in 1660-1661. The causes of these revolts are Spanish oppression and the desire to replace the Spaniards as personal rulers of the people. Encouraged by the Pampangueño Rebellion, the natives of Pangasinan also rose in arms against the Spanish government in Lingayen on December 15, 1660. Several Spaniards were killed, including an alcalde mayor. Inspired by the growing number of their followers and their early successes, Malung proclaimed himself a king and directed his military leaders to place the province under rebel control with his defenses at the capital town of Binalatungan. He appointed Pedro Gumapos as Count, Francisco Pacadua as Judge, and Asinto Makasyag and Melchor de Vera as Army Generals. Letters were sent to the people of Ilocos, Zambales, Pampanga, and Cagayan inviting them to rise against the Spaniards. The Pampangueños under Maniago did not join because they had already made their peace with the Spaniards. To extend his sovereignty, Malong sent 6,000 men to Pampanga and 3,000 men to Ilocos in Cagayan, leaving 2,000 men with him in Pangasinan. But this depleted his forces. The government troops led by Don Pelepe de Ugalde and Don Francisco Esteban outmaneuvered his army in Pangasinan. He was pursued into the mountains and was caught alive. He was executed together with Bera, Pacadua, and Makasyag in 1661 in Binalatungan. Next is the revolt of Gumapos in 1661, and the cause of this revolt is to continue Andres Malong's revolt. Pedro Gumapos and his army of Sambals killed many Spaniards in Ilocos. The Ilocanos did not join them for their loyalty was to their property. During the Sambal invasion, they hid their valuables in the bishop's house and buried other properties. 
The bishop assembled the sambals and threatened them with excommunication the moment they get anything from the churches or from his house. But the bishop's words fell on deaf ears. Gumapo's campaign ended after an encounter with the Spanish forces. 400 rebels were slain and Gumapos himself was taken prisoner and was later hung in Bigan. Next is the revolt of Almazan in 1660s. The cause of this revolt is the personal ambitions. The flames of rebellion soon spread in Ilocos with Pedro Almazan as the defiant leader. Almazan, as a rich chief of San Nicolas, crowned himself king of Ilocos during the wedding ceremony of his son to the daughter of another chief. He wore the crown of the Queen of Angels taken from the church which the rebels sacked. The rebels were gaining some headway at the start but the Spaniards eventually suppressed them. Next is the Pars Revolt in Panay in 1663. The cause of this revolt is found a new religion under native supervision. The prevalent misdemeanor of Spanish priors alienated countless natives from the Catholic faith. Tapar, a native of Panay, wanted to establish a religious cult in Oton. He attracted many followers with his stories about his frequent conversations with a demon. Tapar and his men were killed in a bloody fight against the Spaniards along with native volunteer soldiers. Their corpses were impaled on stakes. Next is the Gohoy's Revolt in Bohol in 1744-1829. The cause of this revolt is the refusal to give his brother a Christian burial. This is the longest revolt in the Philippines during Spanish period for it lasted for 85 years. Father Gaspar Morales denied Francisco de Goy's brother a Christian burial because the latter died in a duel. The Goy argued that his brother's burial was the responsibility of the Jesuit priest because he had died carrying out the missionary's order to arrest an apostate. The priest refused to bury the Goy's brother unless the proper limusnas or church offerings were given. The body was left decomposing for three days. Humiliated by this tragic incident, the Guhoy got mad and incited the natives of Bohol to revolt. He took around 3,000 men and women to the uplands of Talibon and Inabangan. He set up a self-sustaining community far from the Spanish authorities. The Guhoy's community grew in number as more people fled to the hills to avoid being recruited by the government to join its expeditions in northern Mindanao as well as to avoid the harsh impositions of the government. The Guhoy and his men raided the Jesuit estate of San Javier. Then they killed the Italian Jesuit curate in Jagna, Father Giuseppe Lamberti, in 1744. Because of the killing, the Spanish authorities tortured and killed the Goy's future father-in-law and the porter of the church of the slain priest. The death of the innocent porter drove more people to join the Goy's group. Shortly afterwards, Father Morales was killed in cold blood. Bishop Miguel Lino de Espeleta of Cebu tried to pacify the rivals through negotiations. The plan to send secular priests to Bohol was not carried out. A 20-year deadlock set in. The community continued to subsist without outward sign of rebellion. 20 Spanish governors from Gaspar de la Torre, 1739-1745, to Juan Antonio Martinez, 1822-1825, tried to stop the rebellion but failed. In the 1740s and the 1750s, the Spanish government was preoccupied with the Muslim raids. In 1829, the rebellion finally ended when Governor Mariano Ricafort pardoned 19,420 survivors and permitted them to live in the new villages. Nothing has been heard on how the Guhoy died. His autonomous community lasted for 85 years. Next is the Silang's Revolt in 1762-1763. The causes of this revolt are his imprisonment, abusive government officials, and heavy taxation. Diego Silang and his wife Gabriela Silang led a famous revolt in Ilocos in 1762-1763. This revolt happened during the British invasion. It started on December 14, 1762. Diego Silang proclaimed the independence of his people and made Bigan the capital of free Ilocos. 
The British invaders in Manila heard of Silang's revolt. They tried to get his help in fighting their enemy, the Spaniards. But Diego Silang was killed by an assassin on May 28, 1763. The Spaniards paid his friend Miguel Bicos to shoot him in the back. Diego Silang died in the arms of his wife Gabriela. After his death, his wife continued the revolt. Because she won many battles, Gabriela Silang was called Joan of Arc of the Ilocos. But Gabriela was defeated later. She was executed at Bigal on September 10, 1763. This ended the Silang Revolt in the Ilocos. Next is Polaris Revolt in 1762-1765. The causes of these revolts are tribute and Spain's loss of prestige due to the British occupation of Manila. Simultaneous with the Silang Revolt was an uprising in Pangasinan. The local inhabitants wanted the abolition of the tribute and the removal of Joaquin Gamboa, the alcalde mayor of the province, for irregularities in tax collection. The rebellion began on November 3, 1762 at the town of Binalatungan under the leadership of Juan de la Cruz Palares. From Binalatungan, the spirit of insurrection spread to other towns of the province. Palares urged the people to fight since the Spaniards were very weak because of their defeat at the hands of the British in Manila. For over a year, he succeeded in driving the Spaniards and friars out of the rebel towns. The Dominican friars tried to pacify the rebels but failed. In March 1764, Don Mariano de Arza, together with 3,000 loyal Ilocano soldiers, suppressed the revolt of Palares in Pangasinan. Palares was publicly hung. Next is the Basi Revolt in 1807. The cause of this revolt is the wine monopoly of 1786. This was a most unusual revolt in the Philippine history. It was all about the love for a homemade wine from sugarcane called Basi. In 1786, the Spanish government took over the making and sale of wine. They banned people from making homemade wine. The people of Ilocos hated this order because they were now forced to buy the wine from government stores. Before, they made their own basi at home. It is too bad, of course, that they could not stop drinking wine. On September 16, 1807, the Ilocanos of Pidig Ilocos Norte rose in armed revolt. The revolt spread to nearby towns and bloody fighting continued for weeks. Finally, on September 28, 1807, the rebels were defeated by superior Spanish power. The Locos Basi Revolt was over. Many lives were unfortunately lost all because of the love for drinking wine. Next is the revolt in defense of the Spanish constitution in 1815. The cause of this revolt is the abolition of the liberal Spanish constitution. The Spanish Constitution of 1812 was very much influenced by the ideals of the French Revolution, the liberty, equality, and fraternity. This democratic constitution granted human rights to both Spaniards and Filipinos. It was promulgated by the Spanish Cortes or Parliament and approved and signed by 184 delegates of Spain in her colonies including the Philippines. One of its signatories was Ventura de los Reyes, a Filipino. Upon knowing that this constitution was abolished on May 4, 1814 by the despotic ruler King Ferdinand VII, an explosion of violence in the country against the principales took place. The masses suspected that the principales were behind this, since they had been presumed aiding the Spanish authorities to perpetuate in power. On March 3, 1815, more than 1,500 Ilocanos of Sarat Ilocos Norte, under the leadership of Simon Thomas, rose in arms in defense of the Spanish Constitution of 1812. The Ilocanos plundered the houses of rich Spaniards and poor Spanish natives. They also looted the churches and killed some priors and officials. The Spanish government rushed infantry and cavalry forces to the rebellious towns in the Ilocanja. The revolt ended on March 6 with the surviving leaders of the rebellion severely punished. Next is the revolt of the Bayot brothers in 1822. The cause of this revolt is the feeling of distrust between the Peninsulares and the Creoles. 
the Insularis in the Philippines, as well as the Creoles and other colonies of Spain, resented the extra privileges given to the Peninsulares. The feeling of distrust and antagonism between the Peninsulares and the Creoles became intense in the early decades of the 19th century. Inspired by the achievements of the Creole liberators in Latin America from 1808 to 1826 and influenced by the ideals of the French Revolution in 1789 to 1799, the three Bayot brothers, Manuel, Jose, and Joaquin, sons of Colonel Francisco Bayot, a prominent Creole of Manila, conspired with other Creole officers of the Battalion Real Principe to overthrow the government which was dominated by the Peninsulares. The plot was to be carried out on April 17, 1822 at dawn. A few days before April 17, the plan of the Bayot conspiracy was discovered. Governor Mariano de Fulgueras alerted the Queen's Regiment and surrounded the barracks of suspected rivals with loyal troops and 15 cannons. The Bayot brothers were imprisoned after a trial. Next is the religious revolt of Hermano Poli in 1840-1841. The cause of this revolt is the religious freedom. This was a revolt of religious freedom in the Tagalog provinces in 1840-1841. It was led by Apolinario de la Cruz, popularly known as Hermano Puli of Barrio Pandac Lucban, Tayabas, now Quezon. Apolinario started his own religion in Lucban in June 1840. It was called the Confraria de San Jose or Confraternity of St. Joseph. They had their own rituals, prayers and leaders specially suited for Filipinos. But the Spanish officials did not allow any other religion but the Catholic one. So they banned Germano Puli's new religion. Thousands of Filipinos in Tayabas, Batangas, Laguna, and Manila had already joined it. They became fanatical about their new cult. So the Spanish officials sent government troops to break up the group and Germano Puli and his followers took up arms to protect themselves. After many bloody fights, they made their last stand at the Alitao near Mount Cristobal in October 1841. The government troops attacked their camp and killed many followers including helpless old folks, women, and children. Hermano Puli was executed in Tayabas on November 4, 1841. But this was not the end of the story. The Spanish atrocities caused a big scandal in Manila and Spain. Many Filipino soldiers in the Spanish Army's Tayabas Regiment at Malate had relatives killed in the massacre. They secretly planned to take revenge on the hated Spaniards. On January 20, 1843, the Tayabas Regiment at Malate rose in mutiny. They were led by Sergeant Ireneo Samaniego. Dramatically, they captured Fort Santiago in Intramuros. But on the next day, several Filipino soldiers loyal to Spain opened the gates of Fort Santiago. The loyalist troops outside were able to rush in and defeat the rivals after a bloody combat. Sergeant Samaniego and 81 of his followers were shot at the Luneta at sunset of the same day, January 21, 1843. So yan yung ilan sa mga pag na noong panahon ng mga Espanyol. So ang tanong, why the revolts failed the early revolts by the filipinos against the spanish rule failed because of two reasons first reason is that the filipinos were not united instead of helping each other to host the spaniards the filipinos fought each other for example the tagalogs helped spaniards stop a revolt in pampanga in retaliation pampangueños helped the spaniards when the tagalogs revolted so the Spaniards used the Filipinos' lack of unity to continue oppressing them. This was the policy of DVD et Empress or Divide and Rule. Second reason is that there were no national leaders who united the people. The leaders of these revolts had influence only in a small area, some towns, a few provinces, or some islands. There were no Gumborza, Rizal, Bonifacio or Aguinaldo then. 
these national leaders only came in the 19th century. So that's where the reasons why the revolts failed during the Spanish era. So I hope mayroon na naman kayong natutunan dito sa ating Yamhem Educamix TV 25. I'm your teacher May, living this Chinese proverbs, learning is a treasure that will follow its owner everywhere. Thank you so much! There's a bell, no hope, no hope.